You may not have seen Brady's last video in which he walked through the Himalayas to Everest Base Camp. And as he walked, his Sherpa, who was accompanying him, carried this kettle to boil water to make tea. And Brady did a really lovely physics experiment, or you could say physical chemistry experiment. Every time they stopped, as they got higher and higher in the mountains, he measured the temperature of the water using this thermometer. And he found that the boiling point of water dropped until at the highest point, he measured a temperature of only 79 degrees centigrade, Celsius if you prefer. And you remember that at sea level, water boils at 100 degrees. So in this video, first of all, I'm going to explain to you why the boiling point of water changes as you go up in altitude. And then we're going to be a bit critical about the experiment. Great in principle, could have been better in detail. And then we're going to look and see what happens with water when it boils under really low pressure. And also what happens at the boiling point as you heat it up under high pressure. Here we have liquid water, and in the liquid water, and the reason why it's liquid and not a solid is because the molecules are moving around in the water. And some of the molecules that are near the surface can come out. And so what this does is to create above the water some gaseous water, water vapour. The higher the temperature, the faster the molecules are moving around, and so more that come out. So as you heat water out, you get more and more gaseous water above it. If you have a closed vessel, the water molecules will go from the gas back into the liquid and you get an equilibrium between them. And the pressure of the water vapour is called the vapour pressure. As we heat the water, the vapour pressure increases. But as you all know, when you get to a certain temperature, the water starts boiling and steam comes out. And boiling occurs when the vapour pressure of the water is equal to the pressure of the air, the atmospheric pressure pressing down. Because once the vapour pressure is higher, the water can just escape. So what happens before the boiling point is that the pressure of the air pushing down effectively stops the water vapour escaping. The air becomes saturated with water vapour, but any more will form droplets and go back in again. But as soon as the vapour pressure exceeds, the water just pushes the atmosphere out of the way. It takes energy to push the atmosphere out of the way, so you have to keep heating the water, but its temperature doesn't change, just more and more disappears. Yeah, but, that would, this, but we're using a thermocouple to calibrate that. As you go up into the mountains, the pressure of the atmosphere gets less. You can understand this quite easily because you have the planet Earth, which is surrounded by a layer of air. And as you go towards space, you eventually there is no air at all. And as you go up, the air gets thinner and thinner, and the weight of the air pressing down gets less and less and less. And so, as you go up walking towards base camp, if you're not very fit, you will get shorter and shorter of breath because there's less air for you to breathe. And unless you're super fit, if you wanted to climb Everest, you would use a cylinder of oxygen because there's just not enough air to stop you blanking out. Because the air is getting thinner, its pressure of the gas is less, so it is pressing down less on the water, so you don't have to heat as much till it boils. In effect, what Brady is doing is using the boiling point of water as a way of showing that the atmospheric pressure is getting less. There's no argument about the effect. Up in Everest Base Camp, it's obvious, if you understand the physics or physical chemistry, that the water will boil at a lower temperature. Now, 
The problem is exactly how much lower the boiling point will be. I've got the Kathmandu thermometer and our lab thermocouple and at present, what's that reading there? Ten, uh, the temperature in the kettle is at 12, 12 degrees C and the, uh, the thermocouple is reading 14. The first problem is that Brady's thermometer is slightly dodgy and particularly worrying is if you watch his video they measure the temperature of a frozen lake which should read 0 degrees centigrade and they get a temperature of minus 4. Is that exactly minus 4? Now this could be because the thermometer was not very good or it could be that the water in the lake wasn't very clean. It's now reading 110 and the thermocouple is reading 100.1. So there's a difference currently, oh, now it's dropping back down. <laughs> there's a difference of nine degrees. But now let's look at the kettle. It's a bit dirty inside, so when they boil the water, it may not have been absolutely pure, which could have meant the boiling point was a bit higher than it should have been. Also not very good for drinking, but it seems to have been okay for drinking because Brady is here back safely. But the second thing is that once it's boiling, they have to stick in the thermometer and read it. And when it was cold and windy, they may not have always stuck the thermometer in at the same depth. So the readings may not have been completely consistent. But having said all of that, if I'd been doing the experiment and it had been cold and windy, I probably wouldn't have done it any better. If you put water under a vacuum, that is, you start pumping out the air above the water, nothing much will happen until the vapour pressure of the water is equal to the pressure inside your vessel, and then it'll start boiling at room temperature. And in fact, if you're lucky, because when water boils, it takes heat out of the water, you can actually start freezing the water solid just by pumping on it. Some of my students are looking at reactions in water at higher temperatures, above the boiling point. This is rather like doing reactions in a pressure cooker, which people use for cooking food very quickly, but we're going to much higher pressures. And our equipment will go up to pressures of several hundred atmospheres, which allows us to take water right up to temperature of 374 degrees centigrade without boiling. So you might ask, why 374? And how I can be so certain that it's precisely 374? And the reason is that as you heat the water up, the liquid water expands and the water vapour, because it's at higher pressure, is denser. So the liquid becomes less dense, the vapour becomes denser, and at 374 degrees the density of the gas and the liquid become the same. And so above that temperature all you can have is highly compressed steam and you cannot have liquid water. This is called the critical point, and above that temperature, water is so-called supercritical. I think it is um, 374.1 or 2, but I can't remember. But I have a car number plate on which the first letter is W for water, and the number is 374. And the reason was that the, I bought the car second hand and when I saw it I thought, critical temperature of water, I must buy that car. Is that your car now? Yes. Oh wow, well, I didn't and know that. And I've had this car now for 13 years, it's getting very old, but I'm sort of superstitious. I don't want to sell it, perhaps my water research won't flourish. <laughs>